Hi, my name is Myranga. I am a PhD candidate at Department of Civil Engineering, University of Peradeniya. My research topic is permeability behavior of clay fold railway ballast. Let's move to the background of this study. The railway transportation is one of the popular transportation modes in many countries. When we consider railway track systems, ballast track is the traditional and widely used railway track system in many countries, including Sri Lanka. Here you can see a conventional ballast track in Sri Lanka, and this figure shows the ballast aggregates used in ballast tracks. When we consider a cross section of a ballast track, we can identify rails, sleepers, ballast, and sub ballast or concrete bridge deck depending on the track location. Ballast layer acts as the major load bearing component in a ballast track and that facilitates for better drainage. Ballast falling is one of the major problems in ballast tracks. As you can see in this figure, newly placed ballast has uniformly graded and angular shape aggregates that includes large OED spaces and that helps to ensure the proper drainage. However, during the track operation, particle breakage of ballast is significant due to the repetitive train loads so that the generated fine particles from ballast breakage as well as from other sources fill the OED spaces in ballast layer as shown in this figure. Also, after a certain period of time, the voids are completely filled by the fines and it can be identified as fully fold ballast layer. So major sources of ballast falling are ballast breakage, inclusion of fines from sub-ballast, subgrade, and ballast surface as well as fines from sleeper wear. Ballast falling dramatically reduces the track drainage as shown in these figures and that leads for track instability. Therefore, it is important to study the permeability behavior of fall ballast and also accurately predict the stage at which track maintenance should be carried out. So in this study, a series of large scale constant head permeability tests were conducted for that it is important to quantify the ballast falling. There are different indices proposed by various authors to quantify the ballast falling. So in this study, the void contamination index was used to quantify the ballast falling, which is given by this equation. The press ballast and falling materials are the major materials used in this study. Press ballast was collected from Avalipti Railway Storage Yard and ballast samples were graded according to the limits of Indian standard gradation as shown in this figure. The particle size distribution of polling material is shown here. This table shows the specific gravity and void ratio of ballast and falling material. Also liquid limit, plastic limit and plasticity index of falling materials. Based on these properties, the falling materials can be categorized as sandy clay. This slide shows a photograph and a schematic diagram of large scale constant head permeability apparatus which was designed and built to study the permeability behavior of ballast. The major components of this apparatus are water storage tank, constant head tank, piezometer, and cylindrical chamber where this specimen is placed. The total height of the cylindrical chamber is 1 meter and the diameter is 400 millimeter. This can accommodate the granule specimen up to a height of 800 millimeter. The dimensions of the chamber are more than enough to avoid the effect of sample size for ballast aggregates. In this study, a sample height of 400 millimeter was used in between piezometer outlets. Also, at the bottom of the specimen, a filter layer was used to avoid washout of fine particles during the test. Under that, a uniformly graded granular material layer was used to maintain a pre-drainage boundary. For each test, the prepared ballast specimens were placed in the cylindrical chamber in 100 mm thick layers and each layer was compacted to achieve the field density. In the permeability test, five different specimens were prepared. They were clean ballast and fall ballast having BCI percentages of 25, 50, 75 and 100. For each test, the variation of flow rate with head difference was plotted as shown in this figure. Based on that, the hydraulic conductivity values were calculated for each test condition as given in this table. According to that, the hydraulic conductivity of clean ballast is 0.43 meter per second. When falling materials are used, there is more than 90% reduction in hydraulic conductivity. Here, this figure shows a dramatical reduction in hydraulic conductivity with respect to the increase in void contamination index. Also, this figure shows the exponential variation of hydraulic conductivity of ballast with respect to VCI percentage. The obtained relationship between hydraulic conductivity and VCI percentage can be used to predict the hydraulic conductivity of all ballast at different VCI percentages. After each test, 
while unloading the materials photographs of cross sections were taken at the top surface 100 mm 300 mm and 500 mm below levels as you can see here these photographs clearly show the accumulation of fine particles at the bottom levels of the specimen for each vci percentage after investigating the permeability behavior of fall ballast a 2d numerical model was developed using the studio software to evaluate the track drainage capacity in order to classify the track drainage the drainage classification criteria was used as given in this table the criteria is based on the ratio between the track drainage and critical flow rate according to that the drainage types vary from pre-drainage to impervious condition based on the criteria if the q over qc value is less than one it is strongly recommended to carry out the ballast cleaning work so in this study a critical flow rate of 10 to the power minus 4 meter cube per second value was used by considering the rainfall data when you consider a typical cross section of a railway track it is symmetric about the middle vertical axis therefore only half track was considered for numerical seepage analysis here an impervious boundary was used at the bottom and a pre-drainage boundary was used at the top of the shoulder ballast so in this study three different models were simulated in model one the ballast layer was divided into two horizontal layers and the top layer was filled with clean ballast and the bottom layer was filled with fully fold ballast representing the undercutting operation in a railway track in model two the ballast layer was divided into three equal horizontal layers and for each layer different vci values were considered to obtain the track drainage capacity in model three the shoulder ballast was considered separately and the ballast layer was divided into three equal horizontal layers and then different vci values were considered in each portion of the ballast to obtain the track drainage capacity here you can see the results of model one the variation of track drainage with clean ballast layer thickness based on that the track drainage reduces with the reduction of clean ballast layer thickness however when the clean ballast layer thickness is 10 millimeter the drainage condition is still within the acceptable limit this clearly highlights the significance of maintaining a clean ballast layer at the top of the ballast through the undercutting operation this table summarizes the results of model 2 according to that clean ballast provide a good drainage while completely full ballast provide a very poor drainage also a significant reduction in track drainage can be observed when the falling level of the top ballast layer increases also a relatively higher falling levels in the top two layers result in poor drainage condition even though the bottom ballast layer is fairly clean from this figure also you can see uh, when the falling level of top ballast layer increases the track drainage dramatically reduces regardless of the falling levels in bottom layers here this table summarizes the results of model 3 the results clearly show the influence of shoulder ballast on the track drainage condition regardless of the falling levels in layer 1 to 3 the track drainage dramatically reduces when the falling levels of shoulder ballast increases according to that when the falling level of shoulder ballast layer is 50 percent pci or more the track drainage is poor or very poor which requires proper track maintenance with the time moving to the conclusion of the results the hydraulic conductivity of ballast dramatically reduces with the increase in vci percentage due to the presence of falling materials also the hydraulic conductivity of ballast fold with sandy clay material can be obtained for non vci percentage by using this relationship also there is a significant impact from the undercutting operation as it improves the track drainage capacity also it is very important to maintain a clean shoulder ballast layer to reduce the impact of falling materials on track drainage with that i would like to acknowledge the support provided by the accelerating higher education expansion and development operation funded by the world bank and the university of peradeniya research grant also the support provided by the district engineer of nanoe railway office and the staff of Naulapitiya Railway Unit of Department of Railway Sri Lanka are highly appreciated. These are the references I cited throughout the presentation. And with that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much.